from London, England, extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube covering Discover 2015. Brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in London for HP Discover, HPE Discover. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from noise. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Dave Vellante. Our next guest is Patrick Osborne, Director of Product Management at HP Enterprise Storage, and uh, Niall Wogan Hendrickson with uh, CEO of 99X. Welcome to theCUBE, good to see you Patrick. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Um, so talk about the um, the, the digital transformation as it respects to storage. You guys are doing some work with 3PAR. Now, y'all tell us what's, what you guys are doing, what's some of the things you're working on, and uh, what are you talking about here at HP Discover? We're very excited about the RMC integration between the 3PAR and the StoreOnce uh, backup system. Uh, so we're just rolling that out now in our environment, and it's looking very promising so far. So you guys are a service provider, and you, you cover Pan Europe, or maybe tell us a little bit more about 99X. Yeah, um, yeah, we are a service provider based in Oslo, Norway. Um, we are mostly in the Norwegian market, but we do have some shipping customers with Central Asia as well. So we, we do have to handle a lot of offices around the globe as well. And, and so maybe give us a little color around sort of what's going on in the marketplace in, in Scandinavia and what some of the business drivers are that you're seeing, what some of the pressures are in your business, and then how that relates to your IT infrastructure. Well. Um, more for less is also well in, uh, less, in the Scandinavian yeah. market, I guess. So you working on that, Patrick? Yes, <laughs> every day, every day. Mm -hmm. So being able to deliver uh, um, more uh, high quality services um, is a very vital asset of what we think about for the next year. Yep. So what's your take on what these guys are doing? Yeah, so from my perspective, the, the more for less is, uh, it's, it's actually how we design the product, right? So we, we did a panel yesterday talking about some of the challenges of being able to, you know, they have a very, very heavily virtualized environment as a service provider. So for them, the provisioning task is pretty easy, but all of a sudden now you've got thousands, tens of thousands, you know, approaching hundreds of thousands of VMs, right, that they're managing. So they need to keep their, their spend pretty flat in terms of the people that manage that business. So being able to manage your primary storage and secondary storage, the data protection services that they offer as part of their, as part of their portfolio are, are very, very important for them. So being able to do that with 3PAR combined with store once in a kind of an invisible um, type of uh, uh, format is, is really helpful for them from a management perspective, keep the, those costs down. So you now tell us more about your, your infrastructure. Can you paint a picture? of sort of where you've come from and where you are today. Obviously virtualization, you went through that journey that allowed you to do more with less. <laughs> um, talk about sort of how your infrastructure has evolved and what it looks like today. Well, we, we, we are highly virtualized, as Patrick said, and we're also very segmented. We have a lot of medium-sized customers or, or probably in a, in a European or American perspective, small customers. So we have a lot of network segments and, uh, and uh, backup is sort of painful in that scenario where we have a lot of firewalls and routers and so on to traverse. So being able to, with a recent uh, acquisition from, in, from HPE, we are, we're able to back up servers without traversing the network as much as we used to do. And we're also able to back up server without per server configuration. So the management overhead is, is going down quite a bit. So talk a little bit more about that. So prior to the recent, you're talking about bringing in store, store once, right? But yeah. So what was backup like before that project, and then take us through the project. Uh, yeah, well, I think we do backup more or less every way there is, um, including agent-based, including um, using the, the APIs of the hypervisors, um, but even so, it's, it's still traversing a lot of devices before it ends up on the backup storage. Uh, so, cutting down on the number of hops the data has to, or, or points it passes through before it lands, it's, uh, it's, it's a vital asset as well. Uh, because all those um, network segments and firewalls and, and links and routers and whatever they are, they all, they all have to be sized according to, to the data passing through them. So um, moving data with fewer hops and more directly is, is very key in, in the way we look forward on, on data protection. So what was the problem that you were trying to solve? Was backup windows were being hard to get met? Was it too yeah. expensive? You, some so apps weren't getting backed up as well as they should, and some maybe you were spending too much, all that sort of common problems? Yeah, yeah absolutely. We're running backup more or less 
24-7. <laughs> We're moving on average two gigs every second, every hour, every day for a week. Uh, backup was error prone. Small changes in DNS or in the service state or in the service could, could affect backup. It was, uh, and, and we had a lot of people managing it and, and debugging those errors. Mm. So. Um, that's kind of what we were Okay, so you weren't able to offer the SLA that you, yeah. you know, wanted for your customers. Okay, so you know, he calls Patrick, says, okay, help. <laughs> what? Said, I got some solutions Let, so, for you. So, okay, talk about sort of what you guys did together, the solution, what the project looked like. Yeah, so the design point of what we're trying to do with the portfolio is exactly what Neil said. We find a lot of customers, backup touches everything, right? So you have to have, it's an app-centric view, it touches, virtualization, it's very taxing on the network, especially the Ethernet IP network. Um, you've got a bunch of different backends from a storage perspective. So if you have any minute change or something gets affected in that, um, in that, that whole stack, it's very, you have to understand the whole stack to be able to troubleshoot that. So it's very error prone. So for us, what we're trying to offer is that if you, are, if you have this, this platform, very scalable platform in 3PAR that a lot of service providers use to run their, their business, being able to make the secondary storage at part of the initial conversation when you're architecting um, for uh, a service provider type environment is um, it's very helpful to mitigate all of these issues around networking, the application stack, it's built in from a virtualization standpoint. So the design point of the product and the solution together is to bring primary and secondary together. So That's what you call together. flat backup. Exactly. Me meaning exactly. it's not bolted on. Exactly, you don't have to traverse up and down through apps and media servers and agent base. It's really it's sort of an endemic um, property of your primary infrastructure. Okay, and, and what does that result in from a, you know operations standpoint? How did things change? Well, we haven't had this in production for a really long time yet, but so far what we're seeing is that we're able to back up larger amount of data in a lot shorter time, as well as we haven't had really had any real errors so far. It's, it's just been working. So, so, so that is a large change for us. Okay, so the quality of the backup is, is better. And then, yeah. how about recovery? When you, you go back to, to the previous sort of situation, did you have to do a lot of recoveries and it was just a horror show? Or, and I presume you haven't had to do any recoveries yet, but maybe you're testing. Uh, what, what do you we have tested it, obviously, yeah, yeah. The, the speed has been sufficient. There is still some granularities we can, we can improve on, but... Um, in my environment, we mostly think if you really need a recovery scenario, you're using a HA or DR solution, or it's not restored from backup for a large data set. So it's, uh, the speed we're seeing so far are more than sufficient. So are you able to change your monetization strategy as a result of this? I mean, change the way you charge customers, offer more services, charge more, charge less in certain cases, you know, more granularity? Maybe Definitely. you could talk about that a little bit. Yeah, we were able to go to the market with, with a lower price and a higher quality, and, and we're also able to direct our focus more to the, to the protecting the data set that really matters, instead of debugging all the error-prone backups of the data set that aren't really that important. It just, it, it's working now, and that's really good. So Patrick, is this, is, how, is this how you generally approach the market, not trying to just sell a bespoke backup solution, but trying to sell it you know, as part of an overall storage architecture, or, or is this more unique? Um, so for, for us, I, I think in this space in particular in data protection, nobody likes backup, right? It's a, it's a TCO model, right, more than, more than anything. Now's laughing. Yeah. <laughs> so if we I can, love backup. <laughs> if we can give him the ability, for example, to make the 80% of his environment that is maybe business critical, not mission critical, um, just part of the infrastructure, he doesn't have to worry about it and you can charge maybe a lower class of service for that, and then, but really sort of talk about the SLA on your most important mission critical data, and you can you know, wrap VC, you know, DR around those type of scenarios and, and really provide a high level service. So for us, it's enabling those use cases. Um, you know, I, do you like your paying your life insurance premium you know, <laughs> every year? I don't, because someone else is going to derive utility from that, right? So it's, it's, a, it's a model where, you have to do it, right? And if we can find some ways for them to monetize it in different classes of service, that's great. But the expectation from customers around data protection is way more than it has been in the last couple of years. They want it to go away, they want it to be invisible, they want it to be you know, a piece of the infrastructure. So, now, what's new for you guys? What's on the horizon? Any new projects that you're excited about? 
Yeah, we have some new customers coming in uh, starting next year. They will be put on this new system. Yep. Uh, we're also going to migrate out some existing storage over to the tree power and so on. So we have a busy future. All right, Patrick, we'll close with you. So yep. Hewlett Packard Enterprise, brand new balance sheet. I've been talking about that all week. Looking good. I said the deck is stacked for HPE. Um, what gives you confidence that your strategy is going to work in storage and you're going to you know, continue to thrive in the marketplace and grow share? Um, so from my perspective, I see a couple of things. Um, the technology, I'm a technology guy, right? I think we have some great intellectual property and we started down this road five or six years ago where we really focused on our own IP, right? And it's, I think that's where really when they say innovation matters, I, I, I really feel it matters because we can put great solutions into the market, we can get that virtuous cycle mm -hmm. of great customer partnerships focusing on, on engineering and you see that across the yeah. board, right? With Storage, obviously, three par store warrants, a lot of things we're doing there. You see that with synergy, right, on the compute side. I think one of the things you'll see is moving the, when we talk about compute in storage, um, whether it's in an exter external storage array or now you're starting to get server SAN and DAS, that's going to start to come together very quickly. It's very disruptive in the marketplace. We think so. <laughs> I know you do. So for us, you know, it, it, it's, we're, we're poised, we're in a great spot to take advantage of that market. Because the IP for us is all in the software, really, mm. at the end of the day. Patrick, talk about the, uh, the battleground, because we see the management software being a real tier where you guys can add a lot of value with yep. your solutions. Is that a big battleground? You guys see that as strategic, and what do you guys, a quick update on the management side? Where's that going? Yeah, so uh, what some of the things we see on the management side are two angles, right? You have being able to manage your physical environment at scale, so we have a great, great solution in one view, and a lot of customers who have uh, our you know, composable infrastructure and storage together being managed with one view on the physical side, is, it, that's a great solution and customers love it, especially when you have a really large compute population. And on the management side, the provisioning layer, being able to plug into you know, frameworks like ServiceNow and Jenkins and Kubernetes and Docker and some of the tools that Nial uses for provisioning and you know, agility within the enterprise is um, something that's coming and we, from our design points, when you know I sit with my product management team, that's in the that's in the intellectual property right from the get go. You have to have that a well plugs right in. Absolutely, have a well known API. It has to be published. It has to be you know supportable and pluggable into those right. kind of frameworks. Well, guys, thanks for coming on the cube. Really appreciate it. Uh, top of the morning to you guys. This is day two, early morning here in the, in the cube. Day two of wall to wall coverage of HPE Discover. We'll be right back with more cube action here in London after this short break.